Hello everyone. I received um, this box from Amazon Japan. So I thought I'd do an unboxing and I will tell you why I decided to get a Japanese game. It is a Vita game, uh, so that already explains a bit uh, why I decided to import it. And here we are. It's called Labyrinth of Galleria and I'm not quite sure why it is such a, a thick box. There's clearly a big cardboard divider here. In the Amazon listing they only mentioned the game and a soundtrack. So this is the limited edition. It was at the time on special with Amazon Japan, um, which is why I decided to get this rather than just a standard version, which wasn't a lot cheaper. But if that is all that's in the box, then that would be a bit unusual for a limited edition in Japan from Nippon Ichi Software. I have found over the years they they always do really nice limited editions. So I I'm not quite sure to be honest what to expect. So let's have a look what they've put into this open-sided box. Yep. So you can take off the band if you like. And here we have the Vita game. Now I will tell you a little bit about the game, obviously. It is a follow-on game to the original Labyrinth of Refrain. They are both dungeon crawling JRPGs, very obviously Nippon Ichi games. The, the signature artwork, uh, the composer for the music tracks for both games is Tenpei Sato. And if you know some other Nipponichi games, you will probably be familiar with the name. He's done music for many of their other games. I think Disgaea springs to mind. A very good composer. So I'd certainly be very happy to have the soundtrack with this um, game. So let's have a look. Indeed, it says original soundtrack. So I'll just quickly get that out of the cellophane. So this is the soundtrack. There are in fact two discs inside. And this is the track listing. I've put it on in the background very on very low volume. So you may just be able to hear it. I'll just give you a little taste. I'll just turn it up for a moment. So I think that gives you a pretty good impression of what the music is like. I thought there had to be something else. I would have been really surprised if that was all that was in the limited edition. There's an original card game. I imagine it will have um, artwork from all the characters and monsters, but we'll, we'll just check it out quickly. So we finally managed to get the, this little box open. Here are the cards. Ah, this is going to be interesting. I think Poodle Pan and I might find that a bit difficult to play. It says start. I can read that. 
but of course you have to read and decipher all the text on the cards to be able to play it. Kind of obvious really. So if we wanted to practice our Japanese that might be a good way I suppose. All the different characters. I think this is the main character. Possibly. Uh, without an art book it's kind of difficult. I'm pretty sure these will be the instructions. So that will take us a while to decipher. But it looks like some thought and design went into this card game. It looks to me like it's a proper fully operational card game. Which is nice, but I kind of like having my art book. Now the original game, uh, when I ordered it, that came with a small soft cover art book. And I'm very pleased to have that. So I can show you the, the main characters appearing in this game and in this follow-up game they've kept the same format. So the type of characters that appear, the way the whole structure is set up, everything is very similar. So this is uh, little Luca, one of the main characters. And here on the left is Adronya the Witch. She's definitely uh, the main character. Now, I obviously had to uh, look up some English information about uh, this game, uh, Galleria. The promotional information from Nippon Ichi, translated, obviously says, it is said that there is an untrodden labyrinth beneath the Galleria Palace where strange, mysterious art pieces called strange objects are stored. So you, the player, becomes a wandering soul summoned to the magic lantern, necro lantern, uh, by the witch Madame Malta. So very similar to the witch Dronya here. We have a witch called Madame Malta and this one. Uh, with the help of her assistant Eureka. So we have another small assistant here as well. So same, same setup really. And they must seek out the strange objects in the underground labyrinth. It was released in Japan in November last year, 2020, both for the PS4 and the Vita. There has been no announcement as to whether this game will come west. I therefore decided that a Vita version being available, I wanted to get that uh, just in case this game never makes it over to the West, n never is localised. I guess that's a possibility. I, I don't know how well the original Labyrinth of Refrain did. I would consider it, even among JRPGs and dungeon crawlers, a very, very niche game, really niche. So the numbers would not have been huge. Although I noticed in the art book right at the end, there's a little thank you note from the publisher saying, wow, 50,000 units sold. So obviously they must have been pleased with the response. I'll show you some of the um, monster designs, which are really excellent. As always, the art department at Nipponichi Software uh, have done themselves proud. And I would really expect a similar standard in the second game, uh, Labyrinth of Galleria. As you are probably aware, if you're a Vita fan, this year 2021 is very, very likely to be the last year that we will see new games released physically for the Vita. There are very few left that are still coming as far as I know. So anything that appears now to me is certainly of special interest and that was a significant reason uh, why I decided to import this Japanese Vita game. If this game is after all 
localized and does come west it's likely to be only um, PS4 and a switch obviously then that would be great and I would welcome that but as it is I'm hoping that if I manage to get all the way through all the dungeons in refrain I should have enough knowledge of how the game works hopefully to be able to navigate my way uh, through this one uh, so this is a bit of an unusual unboxing and game uh, possibly of very limited interest but I wanted to show it to you anyway because I know there are many many Vita fans among my subscribers and it's part of the Vita's final year history really for something like that to still come out. After all Nippon Ichi Software is an important publisher and has certainly been important for the Vita. Now finally I just want to say um, if anybody asks me would I recommend the Labyrinth game I would hesitate, not because it's a bad game, uh, not at all. It's really a typical Nipponichi software game. If you're familiar with, for example, uh, The Witch and the Hundred Knight, it's sort of a bit similar in that it can be really, really annoying and frustrating at times. NIS have in my opinion, never been very good at explaining their games, especially to a Western audience. So we often find that we have to laboriously decipher what's going on and find our way through the game, uh, maybe consult a guide as well. And I certainly would recommend that if you ever want to tackle a labyrinth of re refrain, I, I really do, just to cut back a bit on that initial frustration. It is a difficult and at times frustrating dungeon crawler, but the more you become familiar with the game mechanics, uh, the more rewarding it becomes. I hesitate, however, to recommend it because so many people nowadays lead very busy lives and don't necessarily have the time and the many hours to put in just to get to a point in the game where it finally becomes enjoyable. Many people quite rightly say, no, I really don't have time for that and I fully understand that. It is simply my interest in NIS games and their style that makes me endure such annoyances and frustrations and uh, work my way through and I'm retired so I have the time to do it but not everybody does and I'm fully aware of that. Uh, so that was just my personal comment on the game and I would expect this one to be very similar in style and difficulty level. Uh, dungeon crawlers are of course by their nature best on handheld. I always maintain that uh, so you certainly have the option of playing uh, this one on the Switch. It is available there and with that I conclude my unboxing of the Japanese limited edition of Labyrinth of Galleria. And I just want to point out that I'm wearing my new Steinsgate t-shirt today with the Steinsgate enamel pin. Thank you very much as always for watching. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.